is entitled Give Thanks, and it's found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. Uh, and uh, this is Sunday School lesson for June the 11th, 2023. And my name is Tony Miller, and the key verse for our lesson today is found in the fourth verse of these very short six verses of text today, found in the 12th chapter. And it reads as follows, and in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, and make mention that his name is exalted again. We're called to give thanks. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to understand that we praise God for his mighty deeds and express a willingness to praise God and offer praises to him for his mighty deeds. Again, it's my YouTube channel. I ask you please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons, please share my lessons. Leave me comments, all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you, amen. Page that I share, I've been sharing this year, describes me as the share of the word of God. I think it's important to understand the point of view of the one that is sharing God's word with you. Amen. So we have a word here. The word is prophet. Prophet is a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. One who God presents a message to. And the attempt is that, that prophet gives the message to God's people. That's a prophet. You cannot make yourself a prophet. God is the one that gives the message to that prophet and that prophet will speak for Almighty God. You can't stand and be a prophet in a vacuum. Amen. That this one, Isaiah, that he will be a prophet that God called in 740, 740 years before Christ again. God will send a redeemer. God will send this timeline, a shared timelines to give us a point of view of who God is and, and the life cycle of God's chosen people. Amen. So in this timeline, we're in this period of kings and prophets. Amen. That this one, Isaiah, that he is one of the four major prophets. That means that he has the most content of any of these other 16 prophets to share with us about the word of all. Mighty God. Amen. That this one Isaiah, that he would become a prophet of God in the year that this king Uzziah died. That, 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 that he would be a prophet to uh, Judah and, and the northern tribes as well a bit because he would be there right before the fall of the northern tribes. And then this one Isaiah, that he would be a prophet of Judah along with Hosea and Amos. And those would be the ones that he will... Uh, that he will prophesy along with during his long life as a prophet of God. Amen. And this one Isaiah was one of the greatest prophets of all time. And, and Isaiah had visions from God and was, uh, and was called by God. He was called by God to do his work, to bring his people to repentance. And majority of the prophets all had the same message, but this one Isaiah had a, a, a more extensive message as well to save them from eventual destruction. And, and Isaiah came to the people with messages of judgment tempered with hope. And he ministered for 60 years. And he pleaded with the people to turn from their wicked ways back to the true and living God, the God who can forgive and restore them. But, 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 even though, even God's great show of mercy and protection 
did not sway this chosen people back to the worship of their God and they would ultimately go into judgment by Almighty God. Amen. This one Isaiah, he speaks to us today as well. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. And, and, and if we put our hope and trust in the coming Messiah that Isaiah would, 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 uh, would extensively talk about uh, for those who live in the land of deep, dark, deep, uh, deep darkness, that would be the Gentile nations. God is offering hope that he's not just having hope for the, for the, the chosen folks, but, but for the, us who live in darkness. A light will shine, there is hope, and there where there was no hope. And the prophet tells us that this Messiah, Jesus, is the very word of God, the very word there at creation, the very word that spoke, the very word in the bosom of the Father before the foundations of the earth. And that word will become flesh, and that word, word will tabernacle, tabernacle with man and ultimately will tabernacle man in perpetuity. And this Messiah will sit on the right hand of this everlasting throne of, of, of King David in glory. And the, the prophet gives us a look into the past where God's people relied upon themselves rather than God. And the prophet wants us to put our hope and trust in this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, this everlasting father, this Prince of Peace, Jesus, that prophesied. Messiah. Amen. And I shared with you, I think when I was last with you in chapter six, why Isaiah was uh, was having when he was being commissioned to be a prophet of God. And here that he would have this interaction and, and, and here that he would be transported. And again, the text did not tell us how it happened. Was he in a vision? Was he actually physically there? Or, or, or was this just like in his mind's eye, these things were happening. We don't know, but we know that all that this prophet Isaiah was 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 there in the very presence of God, and and he saw these things that he would write for us, and 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 here he would write for us what he saw. And again, I share with you last time. Can you even imagine? Even though he's deemed to be the Shakespeare of of of, of the Old Testament, but. We, I don't think his words even give justice to what he actually saw, but I'll share with you what he saw in the next cells. Amen. There's one Isaiah, again, transported to the very throne room of all mighty God. And I saw the Lord high and exalted and seated on, seated on a throne. And these beautiful creatures were fly, flying around the throne. And I share with you that the, the text does not say how many of them were, but we know that however many they were, that they were deemed to be the seraphim. I mean, that there were six winged uh, angels and, and two that they would would would, uh, would use to cover their eyes. Because again, it says that, that you cannot look at God and live. And, and, and two of the wings that they flew with and two of the wings that they... They, their their feet were would cover their feet because no doubt they were in the holy place of God and on a holy ground and 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 these and these these angels they would be in the presence of God and they would they would sing and they would make such a a noise and they would praise God and singing holy 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 the Lord of hosts the whole world is full of His glory and 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 they would they would praise God and and the, and the and the room would. Would 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 uh would be uh like thundering noise as the praise of their lips praising God in the very throne room of God. That's what Isaiah said he saw. I share with you last time. Amen. And having recognized in his sinfulness that these uh, angels would would tell uh, this one Isaiah that he has a mission. And, and, and having had his filthy lips cleansed by uh, these angels as they used the cold, place it upon his lips. 
the heavens were thrown open and Isaiah the prophet uh, gazed in awe and wonderment of magnificence of the holy temple of the Lord, prostrating himself before the very throne of God. And he said that he hushed words we all long and yet often we fail to utter that these angels were, were asking and, and, and God was asking who will go for us? Who shall I send? God speaking and Isaiah there present, he says that here am I God, send me a willing servant of the most high God. And it was an awesome vision of the divinity of, of God's divinity and glory that, that the holiness of all places that met Isaiah startled eyes so for for when he saw the lord high and lifted up in his lofty heavenly place and seated upon the magnificent throne of grace isaiah recognized his own sinfulness and reese and realized that he was not worthy to stand in the presence of such holiness in the presence of almighty god that's what i share with you the last time i was with you amen share with you as well that if God calls you for service to the body of Christ that he will touch your lips like Isaiah's tips lips were touched and you'll be anointed and, and, you, and your words will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and if he calls you as a wretched sinner like Isaiah your words will be uh, be uh, um, anointed and you hopefully will say Lord here am I send me be a willing servant of the most high god amen let's move along to chapter 11 heading up to our lesson and the the concrete expression of this future as, it, as again this prophet would would speak and, a, and the ruler of whom the spirit will rest and this promise comes to israel that as he's speaking uh to these the word of god for the people of god and from uh, and, and the form of a person, a, a human king who embodies the best of Israel's true tradition. He is wise and understanding. He is powerful and effective in war, able to judge for the benefits of the poor, obedient to God, the king who rules the world in such a way that the poor are treated righteously, the meek are given a fair hearing, the wicked are killed, the glorious so glorious is this reign that he is utterly clothed in righteousness and faithfulness as isaiah was speaking of this messiah who is to come amen let's move on uh more of chapter 11 as we move in chapter 12. just give you some background and lead us up to our lesson today amen continuing in chapter 11 isaiah was speaking of this of the future, of this future king, this king of the Jews, this this righteous king, this this righteous reign of Jesus will will reorder creation in profound ways. That the the wolf will live with the lamb, the leper shall lie down with the kid, the calf, and the lion will be and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. That one Jesus will be a child unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and nations will be up on his shoulder and he will be called that wonderful counselor mighty god prince of peace and the cow and the bear shall graze and the young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox there will be a paradise change for humanity as we introduce this jesus to this lost and dying world amen And Isaiah's message is for his people. As I shared with you before, for the current age, and it would speak to the 200 years when the destruction of the temple that I shared with you before, and I'll share with you again soon. And the destruction of the temple at the hands of the Babylon, Babylon, where they will be judged because of the sinfulness of, they will be scattered just like the northern tribes were scattered at the hands of, of, uh, of the Syrians. And now they were scattered at the hands of Babylon. And it will speak to 750 years into the future because, the, again, he's a prophet of God and God will give him messages for people from different eras. And he would also be one that he will have word for us to the end of our ages. That's 
what God would give these messages to this man that would transcend time to speak to his people throughout generations. Amen. lessons about this thankfulness and this thankfulness and gratitude is the same word and gratitude is the quality of being thankful the readiness to show appreciation and, and uh, for and to return this measure of kindness that one would receive because of their thankfulness their gratitude as well amen So that's our background, a good amount of background, about 15 and a half minutes. Let's jump into our lesson. Amen. Thanks or gratitude that I share with you is a good feeling that you have towards someone who helps you, given something to you or something is done. It's, a, it's an expression of thanks used or thankful for, for something someone has done kindly or some, some thought for you. It's, it's often used in, in understanding concerning something that, that was courteous or something that, that someone did for you. That's this whole concept of, of, be, of being thankful and, 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 and Jesus and God will, 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 be th will, will give uh, great things to his people and ultimately we need to have thanks to God for what he has done and doing in our lives. Amen. So Sunday school lesson to give thanks is our subject when we find it here in Isaiah chapter 12. Now I'll use the NIV, I think I'll bounce a little bit in, in translations a bit, but we're again here in the NIV in verse 1. And, and, and this prophet Isaiah that he, he has these words for us here in chapter 12. And again, I share with you, it's only about six verses of text, but still a lot to still get through. And, and Isaiah will say that in that day, in that day, you will say, I will praise you. Lord, although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. And it's important that I share with you this, that, that, that even in our time of, of trouble and in the time of the, the trouble of this people that they had gone for, for over thousands of years and, and falling contrary, a couple of 2,500 years of being against God and doing things contrary to the, the requirements of God. And, 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 he, and he says that in, in that day that he said, because of all the, the, the stuff that we had done, that we, had, you, we have angered you so much, Lord, that, 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 that ultimately, Lord, that, that your anger would turn away and you will comfort us. And there's a reason for that. But let's talk about what we did along that way that people did that caused God's anger towards them. Amen. And then in that day that that this people would, would anger God, that the, the sin that they would go through this period where they would finally make it into a promised land. And, and in Deuteronomy 4, and we'll, I'll share with you a bit of that on the next verse, uh, on the next cell, but, but they would go through a period of judges and through that period of judges that they would constantly do things contrary to God and God would constantly send them another judge and another judge and another judge and and they, they would they would constantly be be sinning and on and on and 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 so much that that God told them when they go into this this promised land that don't don't follow after those people because the idols that they have will will cause you to stumble but they stumbled over and over and they followed after the gods of their of the of the people and 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 they would would, would do things contrary to God and they would ultimately, you know, uh, do things that will get them into trouble and, and ultimately they will be scattered the northern tribes and then Judah would ultimately, they would continue in this sin and they would ultimately be scattered at the hands of Babylon and they would go to a 70 year of exile. But, but in that day also, after that period of time, as God was said, that he will be a redeeming God, that he'll be a forgiving God that he shared with you. Deuteronomy 4. Let's share with you in the next cell. Amen. But this God is a God of forgiveness. And forgiveness is a form of love. It takes a strong person to say that we're sorry, right? An even stronger person to forgive because they don't have to forgive, right? So God, your anger has turned away from me after these 70 years have passed, right? And, 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 and God, and now you have covered me in. And, and, and God told them, and again, I share with you in Deuteronomy 4, that he says that, 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 
that in in your latter days, and in, 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 you know that you're gonna sin, and I know you're gonna sin. You're gonna do things contrary to God. You're gonna fall off the idols. You're gonna do all the horrible things that I told you not to do. But after this period of seventy years will transpire, and he says, from there, you will seek the Lord, and you will find Him. And if you search Him with your, all your heart and soul, and we are in distress and tribulation, and these things come to you in the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and listen to His voice. I share with you last time I was with you that it speaks also to us as well as 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 as, as us who backslide from God that, that in our latter days we turn back to God and hear his voice. That our God is merciful and compassion, and he will not fail you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with your fathers, which he swore to them. But that's this message that 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 that, that Isaiah is speaking to this people and he's telling them that. That in, in, in that day that the, that that, that they'll, they're going to have some measure of forgiveness and in that day they're going to have to remember who they are again let's move on amen and I, and I share with you that this lesson these verses are are song they're they're verses of a song they're verses of a, a song of praise that 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 that, that that Isaiah will speak to, and he, and he will talk about what happens in the in 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 the days of our of our of our uh, uh, of our salvation. But he says that again, this this verse two of this this song, he says, "Surely God is my salvation, and I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. His salvation is found." no other place but almighty god again the word of god for the people of god it's a song of praise that isaiah will be sharing with us today and we'll, we'll, we'll internalize this and try to find some greatness that's found in the words of this song that isaiah the prophet of god will write and leave for us amen and in verse six of that song Again, uh, of verse six of uh, verse three of, of chapter twelve, and it, uh, giving thanks, and with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You will draw the waters of salvation for us with joy, with joy. Let's magnify this verse of text. Amen. with joy you will draw the water that means that there's something for us to do that god doesn't meet our needs as we sit passive and inactive so, so i share with you so many times that when we sin we walk off from god god is still standing in the same place we have to come back to where god is in order for us to ask for forgiveness god is not gone anywhere and, and now he says that we will come back right and, and, we'll, and we'll draw the water we will draw the water. We must reach out and draw. That means that he provides us uh, what he provides at the same time is his water. It's God's will, his rope, and his bucket for which we're going to draw with. And we're going to get this drawing of water because we are now asking for forgiveness. We're trying to change our condition with God. We're turning back. A, back to our holy and righteous Father. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And verse 4 of our text. Again, Isaiah speaking about in that day, in that day of our salvation, you will say, give praises to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done that's why i share with you this timeline is so important to share what he's done proclaim that his name is exalted again isaiah is speaking to this people and again this is his song of praise right but he's saying that in that day we're called to give praise to the lord sing this song proclaim his name proclaim his name and make it known among the nations and exalt that name 
let's talk about this name. Next slide. Isaiah says that in that day they were going to proclaim that name, that name of God. And God has a, n a number of names and all these names because God is so magnificent, that, magnificent that, that we cannot use one word to describe him, that he is the king of kings. He's the comforter. He's the Alpha Omega. He's the light of the world. He's Jesus. He's Savior. He's Jehovah. He's our Redeemer. He's a cornerstone. He's a life. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the Lion from the tribe of Judah. He is the Alpha and Omega. Again, the very Word of God being, being made flesh. He is the armor of life. He is a judge on earth. He is the everlasting Father. He's the Lord of Lord. He is He is uh, faithful and true. He is Almighty God. His wisdom. He's the everlasting Father. And Isaiah says that in the day of our salvation, they must proclaim his name and exalt his name above every name that the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess in that day that we will proclaim his name that that's God is name is important that in the day of salvation when these folks they were they were of now we gone in captivity and now they've 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 had some measure of 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 uh, of, of grace that they are now have got a decree to go back that in that day they're going to proclaim his name. Let's look at another timeline as we move forward. Move to the next verse as well. Amen. We'll make known to the nations. In that day we'll make known to the nations of all the of what God has done, the glorious things that he's done to the world and, and, and his people. That this people, uh, they they can say that what 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 God did for them as He taken them from from uh, Egypt and and would take them into a promised land and He would give them manna, He would give them judges, He would give them kings, that He He would give them prophets, and 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 again that they would can do contrary to the will of God and they would go into exile and God would continue to show them love and favor and he, and even while they're in exile in seventy years that God will raise up a, a, another king that He would take away the the Babylon Babylon who would who would who would uh who would uh and captivated them for seventy years and and God would raise up and show favor to this people and God will raise up Ezra and Nehemiah and they will have this people go back and in this day we will make known to the nations what you've done Lord that, that you've done these glorious things for this people. And, and you know, we can say in our own time cycle, right? And we can do, like I shared with you, I think last time, that I said that sometimes we have to stop and smell the roses. Sometimes we have to stop and go back and, 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 and count our many blessings, what God has done in our life. And again, sing it to the Lord. Again, this is a song of praise for what he has done. He's done these glorious things and let it be known to all the world what God has done. That's what this song of praise that Isaiah is sharing with us. Let's move on to the last verse of our text. Amen. In verse 5 again. Sing it to the Lord for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the, the earth. Cry out and shout. O oh, inhabitants of Zion, thou to be his chosen people, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst of God. His great God is Almighty God. There's none like him. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. There's none like him. He is above it all. He is Jehovah, Yahweh, the creator of the universe. We go on and on and on about those names, and it says that our job that we should proclaim His name and exalt His name to all the nations and exalt everything that God has done for this people, and we should internalize it as well for us as well. I think I have two slides to close out this lesson for you. Amen. We're called to give thanks to Almighty God. It's our chapter here, chapter 12, only six verses of text. 
the song of praise in this chapter is suitable for the return of the outcasts of the exiles of Israel from their long 70 year captivity but especially is suitable in the case of a sinner when he first finds peace and joy in believing to that of the believer when his peace is renewed after corrections from his backsliding whether he's backslidden from from some uh, uh, sinful condition or drugs or alcohol or or or, or, or some sexual sin or or, 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 or some financial condition or sickness or whatever that, that, that we will leave and we'll and we will leave and go contrary and go back to God the God of our salvation and and again that we say we, he's saying that we we supposed to remember what where we were and what happened to us and we're supposed to praise God and to that of the world the whole company of the redeemed when we all redeem and when they meet before the throne of God in heaven we still to have this whole measure of thankfulness. The promise is sure. The blessing contained are rich and the benefits enjoyed through Jesus called for most enlarged thanksgiving that we should all be praising God. We should praise God with fervor. Praise God with all of the strength that we have within ourselves that praising God should be the our life's goal that to lift up the name of Jesus praise God praise him for all the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us throughout our lifetimes by Jesus this root of Jesse this divine anger against mankind was turned away it's all that we were headed in one direction but because of what Jesus did at the cross that what the very word of God that became flesh the very word of Mary's baby, Mary, the very word that sacrificed it, that went to the cross of Calvary for our sins and given us an access to Almighty God, tearing the temple veil, giving us access to God, giving us salvation because he is that redeemer. He's the one, a prophesied Messiah. Mankind, the wrath of God has turned away and he is our peace. We should give thanks because of who he is two more cells to close amen so we were headed on a collision path with hell right that all humanity and all of us here and on this earth as well now if we don't know jesus that that again that we are called that jesus that the ways it wages of sin the cost of sin the cost for our sin that we have within ourselves right the cost of where we were before we encountered Jesus was was death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus who is our Lord and we are all called to make this decision and when we make that decision it's about we we are change our condition that we're no longer heading down that path one more so to close amen We're called to give thanks to Almighty God. So we learn here in, in chapter 12 that thank you, Almighty God, for sending Jesus to make a path for us, a path that leads us to eternity with you, right? And from now until that day of salvation, whether that day of salvation is a day when we make our profession of faith or that day, when we die and we meet you in heaven, or that day when we're raptured, or that day in the when we're with you in a thousand years, and that day when the great white throne judgment, we're with you in, in, in eternity, that day when the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven, and we're with you in perpetuity. We're called to exalt you, to give thanks, to praise your Lord, to exalt your name among the nations that proclaim your names, proclaim everything who you are. You're the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lord. Your Redeemer is Emmanuel, God with us. That we're called to give thanks for who you are and exalt you, Lord, and exalt your name forever among the nations, among all the kindred and tongues and, and of all the people. We should all do that. That's what our call is to do, to proclaim the name of Jesus. And that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. And something you've learned this week, I pray that you've learned something this week to strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all your needs.
learn something worthy of sharing it's in the name of Jesus who, are, who is our Redeemer that he is one who is worthy to us to give thanks in his name we be praying and ask these things always thanks so much for your time Amen